years. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Challenge. Good morning, everyone. This is Wednesday, the 14th of September, and I will try to get through today. It just uh, tested positive for COVID. I can't believe it after being so good for two years here. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Uh, voice might be a little scratchy and the schnoz will be running, but uh, I'll do my best. Here we go. The Dow is up 50. At uh, 31,154, uh, even more important than that, uh, the uh, let me just do this so that you can see it. On the left side chart, you can see the daily. The daily went under the left side low of 31,182 back in that was a September, was a third or fourth. That was a low. It ran all the way to 32,500. And then it turned down and yesterday took out that left side low. We're in close to 31,000, and now we're trying a little bit. So the whole thing here is, <clears throat> was that a one-off, or was that very much like the sell-off that we uh, we got? Uh, it was, I think, the day after we actually went short the Dow via the DOG. That was on the 26th of August. We had that a whopper of a down day, opened at 33,293 slammed down to 32,278, but then continued down. I don't think that that's the case right here. I think there's enough residual strength to treat this uh, weekly inside track repellent, propellant zone. You remember, this is the little mini channel that we have. I always uh, use that as a guide to say, if you can hold that and then rally above the green line when it's at the bottom and rising, it's a good sign at the top if you come back down and go under the pink line as you did back uh, after the doji candle of the week of the 19th of August, then that's usually a very big negative. So we'll see what happens here. Now, within that context of looking at the Dow, there's a big difference. Why? Because... The S&P, this is really interesting. The S&P did not take out that left side low. And that's really a good sign. The day is young. I don't think it's going to do that here. It might do that by Friday. But in the meantime, we've got an inside bar th thus far. The low of 3903.65, uh, that was on the 6th of September, running all the way to the 41, what was that, 41.28? Uh, 4119 area on the 12th of September and then that horrible day yesterday held the left side low. To me, that is a very important sign and now I can take this, I'll do this live and we can take this bottom that was made back in June and draw a trend line right there. Oh, whoops. Draw a trend line right there and you can see we've held it. Most importantly, uh, it has, doesn't say that it's either a propellant zone or a repellent zone. This point is just a zone. If it starts to take out 3,900, that'll be quite a bit underneath this trend line right here. So I'll make this pink. Just an easy technique that you can use and it really helps you give, give guidance. That's really all you want. And at this particular point, it needs to get above 4,000, 4,002 probably, to say, hey, I held that support. Maybe I can go a little higher. We'll go one step at a time. But the MACD in the daily chart has deflected lower. Stochastic still pretty weak at 44%. And the 9 period moving average is still very weak under the uh, 14 period moving average. And one of the reasons why we still held on to our DOG one-to-one -one short, the Dow, from about the 33,300 level, uh, even though we had a near-term trade, which is actually pretty successful in the diamonds, uh, is because I've been saying for some time, I don't think we're going to get out of this particular phase without doing a lot of retesting. And at some point, yes, we should make some kind of a V-shaped uh, reversal, but will it be, now remember, I, I treat things in a very um, normalized way. 
You know, when you have an earthquake, you get an aftershock. I call this an internal low and a residual low. Sometimes that the, um, the residual low can go right down and take out the left side low. Sometimes it holds above it. But the first one is the internal low where all the technicals, the emotions, and the price points are suggesting that that was a very serious decline. And then what happens when you get the retest, sometimes it's like six weeks later. Well, we're already many, many weeks after six weeks in, in terms of the low that was made back in June. Um, you could see what I call the, um, the residual low, not make a new low, but certainly give a kind of a V-shaped turnaround to the upside. Well, with all the things that are going on in the market, it's going to be asking a lot for us not to be able to, to, to see a test, at least of the June low, unless within the next three weeks, by the end of September, beginning of October, instead of having September the usual choppy, choppy month, there's a test of the 4166 200 period exponential moving average at any time in September. That'll change the, the whole course of events. That'll really improve the, the monthly chart. Let's just go one step at a time. And I'm anticipating yesterday in a sense, it was a one-off move to the downside. There should be some kind of a rally and then a bit of a retest, and we'll see where the retest goes. The QQQ, same thing. Didn't take out the left side low over the 6th of September, 390.87. Had a sharp move up into the 312 area, then plummeted down. But yesterday's low was above that 390 level. That is a good sign. But if you look at the weekly chart, that inside track, Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, has been the repellent zone. It's still a repellent zone. It's just not letting the Qs move higher. Look at the IWM. It's a little different, a little different in character, because the um, the daily chart actually held very much better. It did not go down to the left side low of the six, which is at one seventy three, uh, one seventy seven point fifty. Uh, yesterday and today's low is one. Uh, 81.22. Let's go on to the um, gold. Gold is down three at 17.14. Um, it's, in a sense, I could say, kind of holding that little mini up channel. Look at this. So you remember, gold often does this. Certainly the GDX does this very often. It makes higher lows and much higher highs and then turns around at either a C or even a D. And that says that gold should pull back if it pulls back, but hold the left side low or just barely take it, take it, take it out. So this is a pattern that I call the Chapman Wave uh, falling axe formation. Let me just show it to you. This is the reverse actually. It's upside down, comes down sharply, has higher lows, and much higher highs, and then it turns around and it fails. If it fails at a peak A or B, there's a good chance it's going to take out that left side low. But if it goes to a C or a D or even higher, then it's used up a lot of energy to the upside, but it's also used up a lot of downside uh, potential action, and it usually holds the left side low. But if you have gold, I contend, my contention is that gold is holding very well. It's not, it's not rallying very well. It's just holding very well. I'll be back in a moment. Bowser Chapman, Dow's out 54, SP's up 11. We are right back. Love to take your calls. Oh, we actually got to look at what a boo. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. So look at the 200-period moving average in the one-minute chart. For those of the that number of people who trade one and two and three-minute charts, five-minute charts, ten-minute charts, uh, look at that. The magnet of the 200-period moving average, we've gone to peak C1, C2, C3, and there it is trying to test the uh, 39.43 level, or it's actually just a tad lower. All right, the 200-period moving average makes it very important. All right, let's get on with the show. And now what we're looking at is, I, before I do anything else, yesterday we had a call from Bill in San Juan. Very pretty place, I must say. I have never been there, but it looks great. Um, and he, he he called in about ADTX. I had never heard of ADTX. In fact, it's even hard to uh, say the name. Added text, added text, Inc. does immune system um, therapy. And he, we, we were looking at it and it was like, it was at 20, 22 cents or something like that. But it had a most spectacular move. But wait a minute, when I, that was last night, and then I saw it go by at $5. $5? I said, that's impossible. It was in, in 20 cents. Then this morning, I see it's at 18. It had a high today of 28.18. So, uh, Bill, I don't know what you did, but that was just a brilliant, brilliant move. Uh, I, I suspect it's a 20 to 1 a reverse split. It must be, I, or 20 to 1, it must be like a 2,000 to 1. I don't know what it is. It was 22 cents. Now it's trading at 25. Well, 1,000, yeah. So what we're looking at is it hit 28.18. It's trading towards the low of the day at 18. So even if you were in it at 22 cents or whatever it was, it had a spectacular move. Towards the end of the day, and I was just following, and I even I said in the den, uh, ADTX is now up 104%. It went up 200 and something percent soon after that, and it went up even higher. And, of course, I don't know what this is, so uh, maybe someone can tell me, but it, it definitely something's happened here, and it looks to me like it is uh, 50. A 50 to 1 reverse. Oh, I hate that. 50 to 1. You know, remember General Electric, we've seen so many stocks do that. Uh, let me get there. Where did it go? 
Oh, I lost it. I saw it. Someone said fifty to one. That is amazing. I don't know what the what, what the reason is. Uh, yeah. So all I can say is that was amazing. All right. So I'm sure that by now you're probably out of a chunk of it. Fifty. Yeah. Unbelievable. All right. So a couple of questions came. Yep. There it is. A to B. Uh, Basil, fifty to one reverse split. In case you didn't know. Uh, yeah. I, I. I mean, I do know now. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. So uh, I don't like. I don't like. Look, GE. You remember GE was uh, down in the single digits. Then it had a hundred. It had a huge uh, reverse split, and then it got up to the hundred and teens. Was about a hundred and seventeen or something back in. Let me see what it was. GE hundred and seventeen. Yeah, hundred and sixteen point seventeen back in November of twenty twenty one. Straight right now at 69. So it doesn't usually work for stocks or ETFs that, that split like that. I, I, it's, it, it's really a, a fake out. It's, it's a false move. It's to try to uh, garner enough uh, price movement so that the, 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 big, the big guys can come in and buy the stock. I don't like that at all. But anyway, I hope that you've done a great, you've had a fabulous, fabulous uh Again, Bill, and uh, hopefully I'll hear from you sometime, and you'll tell me what you did. So GE, now I've had um, a number of people mention uh, GE is still a core American company. It is still a, a real company with earnings, etc. unlike the ones that are moving without, uh, without profits, not making any money. You know, you've got to look at the market in a very different way. You've got to look at the market as, as – what is working? One of the reasons why we've stayed in our positions, uh, we've got an energy stock, we've got a natural gas stock. We're experimenting here with, uh, with a stock that's just been hammered maybe 90% down from its highs, which up, we're just, this is the exact opposite of the 50 to 1 split. This is a 50 to 1 to the downside. We've got our uh, DB, uh, this is DBA, that is the uh, DB Agricultural Fund. We've got the IAI still. Do I do I want to actually buy the IAI, the broker dealer, or the the stocks that are within it? At this particular, I think I'm waiting. And one of the reasons I've been talking about this for some time. You remember back in? Uh, let me go to the SMH. Back in. Now I've got to be careful. Yeah, my wife has warned me that with COVID. You aren't thinking very clearly, so just uh, divide by half, whatever I say, divide by four, in fact. But back in July the 5th at 189.94, very soon after that, we got three times long the, uh, that was uh, around about the, uh, yeah, we, we got long, three times long via the SOXL. And we had fabulous, absolutely fabulous moves. We had the same thing, the SOXL and the, uh, uh, the, this time we didn't have a ARKK, but we did have three times long the Qs, TQQQ. This time, ever since that buy that we got back, uh, that was around about, about the six or so of, uh, of, uh, of September, we have not done anything as extravagant as that. We have one to one long, whatever it is. I don't. I just don't think this is the time to be doing, having, having so much risk. Not only that, it's extremely difficult to know what is working and what is not. So within that context, you remember just the other day I was looking at the SLX and I said, you know, that's really good. Right at the two hundred period moving average. But I don't feel like I really want to go long, but there it is. And it reversed at the 200-period moving average. This is the Van Eck Vector Steel ETF. Hits the 200-period moving average at about 56, and now it's trading at 51. Well, it's only 10% down, but still. you have to forgive me if you hear me uh, having to uh, do all the things that COVID forces you to do. So, uh, okay, X is the U.S. Steel. And that, um, oh, got it there, there it is. Yeah, look at that. Goes from the 26s down to 20. Not a good pattern. So I've tried to avoid all that. You know, we've got, a, I think, so far we've got a pretty decent mix. We've got a financial stock, 
it's doing very nicely. Uh, I don't know if it'll stay very nicely, but it's 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 holding okay. Uh, we've got we've got we're attempting to get some of the stocks that have just been decimated. For instance, yesterday we got into We. This is We Work. This is the second time I've tried to get into it. Uh, only because the flexible workspaces, offices, suites with private amenities. I, I felt very certain that from what I can read and what I can see, that more and more companies are going to be looking for something more flexible because they can force people to come back to work, but it might not always work out. No, it doesn't work at all. So we took a loss yesterday, about a 4.8% loss on we, and now I'm going to stay away for a little while. So I'll be back in a moment. The Dow is down again, down, down 65. S&P is down 4.8. This is going to be a tough, tough couple of days. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. See you in a moment when we get back. If you want to take advantage of the sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Chart allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. I was asked about FXI. FXI is the iShares China Launch Cap uh, ETF. And you remember, I, I, I still feel as strongly as I ever felt that this is an area that I would just avoid and this and uh, the question, no, it wasn't a question statement, put. Yeah, I, I'd be in the put side for sure because I just don't think that they've got a good recovery coming on. And if you, look at, if you look at the overall market just internationally, look what we've got. We've got wood. This is the uh, iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF starting to weaken a lot. It's still holding pretty well when you think about the whole year. It's actually uh, going back to 2021. Uh, but if you think about it, this is it's still holding okay. 
But it's down $1.03 uh, at 73.39. That's the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF. So you have no choice. You have to go. At least I have no choice. I have to go to the um, copper chart because international timber and forestry, international high-grade copper. Uh, they used to call it Dr. Copper. I don't know if that's relevant anymore. But the fact is it really is important. It does tell you a lot about what's going on. So peak A, peak B, peak C, the MACD is pretty good. Stochastic is not good at 49%. On balance volumes pull back. The pink is still uh, underneath the 9 is still pink underneath the 14 period moving average. The weekly chart looks terrible. High grade copper. So high grade copper is not participating. So when you put it together like that, and if you add the HGX, this is the HGX is the, here we go, like that. This is the Philadelphia housing sector index. Uh, we, we're looking at 368. They made a high just uh, a month ago in the 420s. So this is this is weak. Uh, it's not failing really just yet. It will fade if it takes out that peak D trough. Uh, trough D, that's at, on June of this, of this year at 331.20. That'll be very, very poor. Uh, that'll be poor both on the weekly chart and the monthly chart. But the daily chart is saying, hey, I've got a couple of support areas that I'm looking at, but with rates so high, and you remember I told you the story about uh, in New Orleans, a uh, um, couple of real estate agents said they had more than doubled their 2021 uh, profits by March of this year, and they don't know how it could keep going. Well, they, the, the big thing was that they were very upset that uh, besides the interest rates uh, climb, You've also got in that particular area. Remember, this is just this is the part of New Orleans that I'm talking about. Uh, the insurance, the uh, flood insurance, had gone for some people like from seven thousand to twenty one thousand. I mean, that is huge. So that's impacting, and we've got the same sort of story all over the. Oops, going to get used to those sneezes, yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to have to get used to this sort of thing because each each city has its own little problem. You know, they're talking about affordable housing. I, I've always had this thing about affordable housing. When finally housing is affordable because the prices have come down so much, and certainly we haven't seen this for a while, but certainly here in Newton, Massachusetts, where I am, uh, the garden city, they call it. Um, I've been here... You won't believe it, but I've been here when prices have been cut in half, cut in half. And what happens is that people say, oh, no, I want whatever it is, name a price, 500000 I want 500000 And uh, a bit comes along, and the uh, person says, okay, I'll give you five twenty, And the person says, nah, 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 uh, I want more. And then the person comes back and says, and waits a little bit, and then comes back and says, "All right, I'm going to make it 480." And the seller says, oh, "Are you kidding? 500 at least?" Well, finally, what happens is nobody shows up. We haven't seen that for a long time, and I'm, I hope it doesn't happen now. But nobody shows up. I remember going back in 1979 uh, when I was looking for a two-family house. The person that I, I finally bought a house from said, thank God, you're the first person that's come in, in, in a year. I've just been waiting and waiting. So, um, yeah, you've got to. These things happen. I know it doesn't feel like it can happen, but you've got to, you've got to keep that in mind. So when I'm looking at the HGX index, it's been a year. It's actually a little bit more than a year. What was that? That was May, was it? That was that high that was made. Uh, yeah, that was right there. Yeah, it was May. May of 2021, the high was 538.36. I'm going to type that in, 538.36. 538.36, and that was 5, 2021. All right, so now we're down to 369. We have gone even lower. We've gone down to the 330 area. Not a big deal, but it is a big deal if rates are going to go quite a bit higher. And I'm looking at this and I'm saying there are macro factors 
that are impacting the market right now. You know, I had a webinar uh, asking the question, and we went through this very carefully. The question was, is it possible to make new all-time highs in 2022? And my answer was, only if certain things happen. Now, we're not the market. I can't say absolutely. Who knows? You just It's impossible to say for certain. But all the work I did said that if certain factors unfold, we could see a sudden burst of strength going towards the all-time highs in the indices. But if those factors, and it really depends a lot on interest rates, if those factors do not unfold, we could go sideways. And that's the, that's the pattern. In fact, let me do this right now because uh, I don't know if I'll be feeling well enough to do my show tomorrow. But let me just do this now. Let's go to the S&P, SPX.X. And look at this. You see the sideways move back in 2015. The high it was in May, 2134.72 in the S&P. It went down to 1810, February of 2016. They made a lower low. There's your internal low. There's your lower low. And then it started to rally, but it really wasn't until mid-2016, a year before you start to move to the upside. Let me show you this as well. Uh, I'm going to try to get this over there. It's the yellow chart, and I hope I can get it. Yep, there it is. So this is, this is very important to me. For a very long time, there's a, a pattern that I call the dark news cloud cover using the Dow Daily chart. And the Dow, dark news cloud cover is suggesting that at a certain point, there, there are enough bad news stories that the market can't take it anymore. There are always bad news stories, but sometimes the market just ignores it. And for a long time, when I say a long time, we've had, yeah, let me just go to what you can see at the moment. Back in May, of, May the 10th of 2021, internal low. Uh, in June, we make the residual low. Lower low, residual low. And you have a really nice rally. Then you have dark news cloud cover the 16th of August, starting on the 16th of 2021. You come down, you make an internal low, then you make a residual low. Then you have a dark news cloud cover the 8th of November. You have a very sharp move down. I call that the internal low. And then there was a higher residual low, but it went even higher. It went to the uh, 5th of January 2022. That was the top dark news cloud cover. Then you got yourself another internal low and a much sharper residual low. And then you had the rally. And in the 29th of March, you had this whole double top period, and then you had an internal low back in late May and a residual low in June. So where are we now? When I get back, we'll discuss that. Where are we now? The Dow's up 26, the S&P's up 7. A real struggle after yesterday's brutal attack. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. So I had a question. I'm going to go to it right now. Uh, the question well, actually was a statement. I had a question. So the statement is, okay, there it is. Uh, the statement was, Basil, remember this chart question about a rising X pattern? Well, it did break out somewhat, but I didn't chase because I expected a test of the big green up bar. Yesterday it came and I started rebuilding my RWR position. Can you please review the chart and share your thoughts? Thanks. I'll add, I understand it can see the low 30s. I'm skating, but didn't want to miss a potential reversal over a few percentages. Okay. So it went to the 200 period ARWR at 35.59, down 31 cents. This is Arrowhead pharmace Pharmaceuticals. It went from a peak F top back in uh, July. I'm wondering if my sound is still on because I just, there it is. Uh, it went to a peak F, pulled back for three days and started on the 14 period moving average, started a brand new peak. A, B, C, D, E went just above the 200 period moving average. You remember, I treat these things with tremendous respect because I've just seen too many times how that magnet of the 200 uh, period moving average either drags the price towards it or repels it or propels it. So look at this. It got four, four sessions to try to hit it. First session, it touched it, and then it was a red candle, and it turned down from the uh, 40, uh, let's call it 47 area. Now it's a 35. So I, I, like, I like the forcefulness of the up move. Unfortunately, what should have been support was this whole area here that was the July phase it was just under 40 between say 40 and 42 if it held that which it tried to do and rally and then move a little higher i'd say great that's what you want to see in a stock that's using time rather than price unfortunately this is using price and if you look at it this way here you can see the move from the high that was made at that peak e top just above the 200 period exponential moving average right there well, we've had just a little bit more than a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. And I, I've been using this a lot more lately, but I, I've always used it, but not in a very formal way. And what I've tried to do is, there you are. Look at that. It went to exactly the one-to-one. -one. This will have to be pink. So this is exactly where you want to see some kind of support. So the stochastic's at 21%. I prefer if the stochastic was at 15 because it allows some room to the downside, and the MACD is uh, deflected lower. The 9 is still very, very weak in the daily chart. The, the weekly chart this week has just gone to a sell, 
The pink is, uh, in other words, it flipped from green to pink in the nine-period moving average, and it made a peak D. Oops, let's move that over. I think it was an E, a peak E in the monthly chart. So this pullback here is pretty significant when you think it went from the 90s and now it's down to the 35 area. So I, I like the fact that you just, this is an entry point, and I know that you, you uh, Dan, you, you've got a long-term perspective of these things, and you do a lot of homework on the fundamentals of the company. So I'm not going to get into that at all. What I am looking at here is that the last move up, if it retested the 200 period moving average even once after that decline, I'd say, oh, this is really nice because now it's trying to form some kind, of, some kind of support. At this particular point, I think there's still a little bit of weakness to go. Where would it, where would it actually touch? I don't think it's going to take, at this particular point, I don't think without a rally first that it takes out the low of the week of the 17th of June of 2681. Now, what's interesting is I'm following, I'm, I'm sorry to write them down. I thought I had written it down before. Now I have to re rewrite them. But I'm following a whole bunch of these mini, um, these mini biotech stocks. For instance, I want you to do this today. I was going to buy for the subscribers Immunity Bio Inc. Develops immune therapies. Um, it was, look, this is the bar that I, I was going to say, okay, this is now a new A. Uh, it's really tough to call this a B. But uh, let's just say that it isn't a B, that this is, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So let's just say that this is 54.54. This, this is an A and this is a B. It could have an alternate count, but I didn't think it had an alternate count because the MACD was very strong and the stochastic uh, was over 90, over 80% at 90%. So I said to myself, oh, okay, uh, we, this is a very difficult session. I don't want to put any money to at risk at this particular point. So I'm going to hold off. Well, look at this. The darn thing is up 6.74% today, 6.02. What I was going to do is I was going to say, using the 200 period moving average, if we could buy it just a little bit under that, and it closed at about 563 yesterday, if we could buy it a little bit under it, if we get it, immediately it has to move higher. And if it goes above yesterday's high, start to raise the stop. And if it goes to a certain level, take something off and make the stop at least 10 cent profit. That's the way I would have done it. I didn't. So that's just coulda, woulda, shoulda. But I'm saying I'm looking at a lot. There are so many of these micro uh, biotech stocks. This is one. Another one I had, I'm still writing them down. So is a a AMRS. AMRS. Here we are. So this is that cup formation. It made a peak B. This is the second B, but if it goes higher than that AMRS is Amorous Inc. Synthetic Biotech with Lab to Market. Uh, that's that's their that's their modus operandi. That's what they do. But I I liked it, but I didn't like the cup formation because that's also resistance. But it does have 439 as the 200 period exponential moving average target, and it's a 390 right now. So these are stocks that I'm starting to look at a lot closer. We've done that before, but I haven't had anything for a little while. I'm starting to look at that in this environment. If we can get a couple of nice gains just to build up a kitty for any really sharp down move, I think that's a good idea. And uh, is that, did I just hear the uh, break come in for the, uh, is the music going on? I should know. I didn't put the, uh, no, there isn't. Not yet. Okay. So a couple of things going on. So the buy, but the IBB, and this is so fascinating. Look, the IBB, which is, if I can just get this, man, let me use this mouse. IBB. Look, the IBB is actually very weak. It's not doing well. So it's these individual stocks. I mean, there are a couple of stocks within uh, different areas. Something just popped up today. I'm going to have a look at it. PL. I haven't looked at this for a long time. Now, look at, oh, what an amazing move. Look at this. Up 9.9%, up 61 cents at 676, above the 200 period moving average. So I'm starting to find stocks like this that in this environment, I might, for subscribers, I like to have single-digit stocks that have a chance of a big gain very quickly. And then if it holds well and we're still long at the end of the day, we can keep it for a little while. 
And if you're wrong, you're wrong. You just know immediately you're wrong. So I think this is an environment in which I'd like to try that. I didn't want to do it today because it was such a, a very difficult day to assess because the Dow's at 54 after all of that. 1,200 points down and all we can do is 55. Not good. S&P's up 30. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman. COVID Basil Chapman. Just about to wrap up with the final story. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month and try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hello, folks. We're back. And uh, I see now the Dow is up 138. I think we needed to see uh, a, a, a good hour or two. It's not yet an hour or two. It's an hour and a half of some kind of consolidation. I, I just can't see why we shouldn't. I have a decent uh, end of day close. Look, you've got peak A, peak B, leg C in the one minute chart of the E mini. Uh, uh, no, it's actually D going to an E. Yep. I, I, I just, after yesterday's drubbing, uh, anyway, that's what I'm looking at. And mo most importantly, uh, it's the sustaining power. So if anything is going to hold, it's going to have to hold into the close. I did. I thought about going long this morning, the back back into a long position in the Dow. You know, the risk is. I, I could have had a two point stop. I think that would have held very nicely, 
But we've got positions. I don't have to overdo it. We're, we're okay. I don't need to put a subscriber's money to at risk without really feeling confident. So we'll see what happens. And if there is a nice close at the end of the day, uh, today is Wednesday. We'll see what happens at the close on Friday. I think that's going to be really important. I've got a chart that you might be looking at. PL, Planet Labs, has showed up in a scan. It's up 9.7%. Uh, at up 60 cents at 674. You know, there are a lot of these planet labs. I mean, all these labs and, and um, the different therapies. We're looking at uh, the micro caps doing pretty nicely under these conditions. All right, so let me just do this. The volatility index <coughs> should be down today. It went to a higher high yesterday, went to the 28s, is now at the 26s. It's still pretty high. Uh, most importantly, what we are looking at here is that that weekly chart is still green. Let's see what happens by Friday. If by Friday it can go under 24, let's say 23.30, then the VIX says, okay, that was a one-off, and you don't have to go skyrocketing to the moon, but you can have a really decent bounce before another test. And the SMHs, I think that's the clue. The SMHs today are only up a little bit. Oops, get out of that. Let's go. 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 Let's go.